Hey, how's it going? YouTube? back in the video, and today I'm talking about how Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis could possibly be the future of the NBA. Now, as a lot of you NBA fans will probably know, unless y'all been like sleeping under a rock or some shit, that you would know that the Kristaps Porzingis was traded from the New York Knicks to the Dallas Mavericks to now make one of the best young duos, at least if Kristaps Porzingis comes back healthy, one of the best young duos in the league with probably the rookie of the year, Luka Doncic, and a very, very young Kristaps Porzingis who's still very good, assuming that he will be the same coming back from his injury. So in this video, I'm pretty much going to be going into how they're going to be meshing very well, when they're going to be meshing, like, like why it's like perfect timing, how they both play very good on both sides of the ball, and how they have the potential to be the best in their respective positions. I'm making all that in this video, so without further ado, without rambling on too much, let's get right into this video. Alright, so my first reason is obviously probably one of the more obvious ones that a lot of people are already talking about, is that they are both extremely, extremely young, as I mean, by the time they are fully meshed, they will probably just be hitting the prime of their careers, which will mean they're both superstar level players. As Christoph Porzingis, who could definitely make the arg argument that he was a superstar level player before he got injured, and he actually was a dark horse MVP candidate right when he got injured. A lot of people were like d debating whether he could be an MVP candidate or not in the beginning of the season that he did get injured, and Luka Doncic already showed that he's rookie of the year this year the best rookie out of this draft class at least as, as of right now and he will most likely become a superstar or at least all-star level player in the league in the near future I think he was already an all-star level player this year so he, I think he will definitely develop into a superstar level player for the Dallas Mavericks so to have two superstars on your team it will be very very nice as I think Kristaps will definitely be coming back and not maybe not full strength but he will still be coming back very 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 strongly and same with Luka Doncic I think he's going to be having a he's going to have the even better season next year than he did last season, especially with Christoph Porzingis being added to the team. But now my second reason is going to be that they can both carry the loads on both sides of the ball. As like most players are really good on offense, like most all-star level players are either really good on offense or really good on defense, but then kind of okay on offense and then kind of okay on defense. Like they're usually not very good at both sides, but that's why they these are superstar level players and not just star level players. As I mean, just look at what happened before Christoph Porzingis got injured. He was averaging 22.7 points per game. 2.4 blocks per game, 6.6 .6 rebounds per game, showing that he can protect the paint at a very elite level as at that year he was ranked among some of the leaders in blocks per game at the time, And but also he can spread the court on offense because he's one of the he's a very tall player who can score in the paint but can also score from everywhere on the court as he can shoot the three very well, shoot at the mid-range very well, and obviously being as tall as he is and big as he is, he can score in the paint as well and he grabs boards, so he pretty much does everything very, very well. But Luka Luka Doncic can also do the same thing. As only as only his rookie year, he's already a 21 point per game score. He averages 1.1 steals per game, six assists per game, and 7.6 rebounds per game. As he's shown that he can not only score the ball, but he can also play defense. As 1.1 steals per game isn't too impressive, but I mean still a very good start especially for your rookie year and he's only going to develop his defense even more and more and he's a pretty big size for a point guard slash shooting guard in the NBA. So I mean. He's definitely going to be able to like play defense, play hard defense on a lot of players, and he's going to be able to overpower a lot of players as well. So with them two being a, um, I think Luka Doncic could definitely lock up the perimeter while Chris Porzingis locks up the paint. Plus, they can score from everywhere. That duo complements each other very, very well, and I think they're going to be very good teammates together as well. And then my third reason is going to be that they have potential to be the best in their respective positions. As when you look at it, Luka Doncic, I mean, already is probably a top 10, top 5 uh, shooting guard or point guard, whatever you want to address him as, or, or small forward, I guess. He's definitely not a top five small forward, but he's definitely a top five shooting guard in the league. As, I mean, you really don't, you can't say many names that's ahead of him. You could make the argument top three, but I'm going to say top five shooting guard in the league right now. And then Christoph Porzingis, before he got injured, I mean, you could probably say he's almost as good as Carl Anthony Towns, and Carl Anthony Towns at the center position is probably a top two, top three center in the NBA, top four maybe. So, I mean, Christoph Porzingis is definitely top five in power forward or center positions as well so I mean when you really look at it when you have two players that could that are the best in their position or very close and when they develop fully they could very much be considered the best in their own position well you're gonna have a very very nice team as I mean when two of your players could potentially be the best in their positions that means 20% of your starting lineup not maybe not 20 I'm an idiot sorry I can't do math but that means at least like two players on your team are literally unguardable and they're the best pretty much some of the best players
players in the entire league. And when you have something like that, it's very, very hard to guard them. And I mean, if you can do that and they do develop like I do think they should, they will be very dominant, especially in the future in the NBA. But now that I got all that out of the way, now that I got how they could be extremely good, all the reasons how I think they would develop and everything, let's get into their potential as a team. How, what could they really do? With only Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis, despite how great I think they could both be, especially when they hit the primes of their career, they're going to have to add at least a third all-star, maybe very, maybe a borderline all-star level player. Because, I mean, we all know, in the NBA today, it doesn't matter who you have on your team, you need at least three superstars or three star level players to legitimately win a championship. As look at the Warriors, look at Houston. Capella, I considered a star level player. Like, he's a fringe all-star level player. I mean, when you look at all the contending teams, uh, you have Eric Bledsoe is a fringe all-star, Chris Milton was an all-star, and Giannis is a superstar, uh, Kawhi Leonard, uh, clearly they only have Kyle Lowry and Kawhi, but then now Pascal Siakam, he's becoming a third star as well. So, I mean, every team that's legitimately competing for a championship has at least three star level players. So, I definitely think that their potential, if they do add another star or champ, they would definitely probably be very high in the championship contention if they do add another star, but if they just stay pad and keep these two stars I could definitely see them probably being like a second maybe third round team in the playoffs and I mean but they could easily add this star as I mean they they're gonna have a high lottery pick in the draft this year and they also have some cap room to sign another max free agent so I mean there is a very big chance that they can add that next star and it won't be that hard for them at all. So yeah, pretty much that's what I think they're I think that's their potential as of right now and how they can also be the future of the NBA. But I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you agree with me? Do you think Luca and Chris Ops could potentially be one of the best player best duos we've ever seen in the NBA? Do you think they could be the future of the NBA? Do you think this is the uh, NBA is gonna be going through Dallas in the future? I want to hear all your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you have any video ideas wants to make comment those below as well. And if you did like the video point like button and subscribe button that means the absolute world to me but uh, y'all been showing tons of support on the channel and i cannot thank y'all enough but also to give all glory to god as he's the reason i'm here he's given me all the blessings to be here and make this video for you guys he's blessed me in so many ways in my life i cannot just thank him enough and all praise has to go to him he's blessed me kept me healthy kept my friends family and everyone around me healthy he's really made our lives good and he's just showing me so many blessings so i have to give all glory to god but like I said, that's it for this video. So hope you have a blessed day. Can I have a blessed day? So you need to have a blessed day. See you in the next video. Goodbye. Boo. Blah.